John, from the moment you signed on, what, what, what do you then do? Can you prepare? Do you sit at home eating kangaroo testicles? Do you? No. <laughs> Have you ever been in my house? <laughs> um, I, I remember our first meeting was at uh, Soho House. And, we, and it, was, it, it was fancy. <laughs> and I, my manager, Gavin, was with me. And I had said to my husband, Scott, that I was going to. And I, you know, I think availability had been checked other years. Yep. And I wasn't available. Um, but this year I was available. And. Uh, that was what, probably April? No, it was early, yeah, it was April, May. It was really May, early, really it was April, May, yeah. And then I took a little while to really decide about it and think because I wanted to make sure that I was ready for it and, and there's really no way you can prepare. If anything, to be honest with you, I, I, you know, I said this the other day and I know Fleur knows this, but I, I started eating a lot more because <laughs> I put a little bit of weight on because I knew that if I went in, I was going to lose weight. Mm -hmm. Therefore, you know, and I know everyone wants to see, yeah, muscle and all that, but <laughs> no, really. <laughs> but the young men who were in that situation found it really difficult because mm -hmm. they had no fat on their body and they were so tired. And the rest of us old ones, older ones with a little meat on the bones were like, yeah, <laughs> great time. We went for dinner the, the, one of the night before you went in yeah. and I have never seen someone shovel in so, so much. much food. Yeah. I thought it was because I was paying, but it was because <laughs> you were paying. <laughs> Partly it was, but yeah, no, but there's, there's really no way you can prepare, but it, it, it's one of those things that it's then always in the back of your head because you're thinking, it's not gonna come up that quickly, it's not, and then um, holy sh I was yeah. there. Mm. I'm in Australia, you know, and I'd been there for a, a, a convention, a Comic-Con convention prior. I sent Scott, my sister, and my assistant home with photographs so they could post thinking, so people would think I was going home. Uh -huh. We took them on the plane on the way out there and changed outfits, did all that stuff, and then I went into isolation. And I think it was a big surprise when I, yeah. people weren't expecting it. Yeah. We kept it so, we really worked hard to keep it quiet, didn't we, hon? We, we kept really hard to keep it quiet. Right. You know? Fleur, did you, did you do your homework? Did you kind of look back at pre you, what previous series or did you kind of go into it fairly fresh? I did. I kind of like dropped myself in it pretty early on because I was at Anton Deck's Saturday Night Takeaway mm -hmm. backstage. This was like year, four, four years ago, yeah. five years ago. And I bumped into Mickey. And I harassed you. <laughs> and then she was like, you know, of all the reality shows you've ever thought about doing one. And I was like... Well, out of all of them, the only one I actually would do is I'm a celebrity, actually, out of all of them, because I love the challenge. Blah, blah, blah. And then Mickey was like, hmm, interesting. <laughs> Every year since then. <laughs> <laughs> Every year since then. But isn't Mickey's that funny, knocked on my door. That's the same thing that most of us, yeah. pretty much all of us said, is it's the only one we would do. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Because yeah. of the... It's not a backstabbing competition. Mm. Yeah. It's if there's any you know stuff that goes wrong, there's arguments, fine. But it's it's about camaraderie. It's about competition. Yeah. It's about doing something, taking yourself out of your comfort zone and doing something different. And it's like the challenge of it. Yeah. So if anyone was to see my YouTube history right now, it is just oh, I'm a celebrity. I'm a celebrity. Because the minute I signed on, I just went online and I battered it. I watched the show so much. I watched all the trials. I was like, just try and get your head in the game because I was like, I don't know what I'm going to face. I need to at least try and prepare myself mentally and it didn't, for it. Did and it, it didn't. <laughs> was it harder than you thought it, was it would very be? Hard. Yes. Yeah. It was the, 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 the hardest moments. And this is something that uh, I, I found the first four days were the hardest mm. because you're taken out of your isolation in the hotel rooms. Where your your the day your phones are taken away from anything that puts you in contact with the outside world gone okay, and you have a chaperone with you twenty four seven who's in a room next door to you. So if you were even to try to creak out, yeah. that head pops and go, "Where are you going?" <laughs> yeah. Right. So you're 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 pretty much you're in that situation. So then when you go in, your first four days are. Obviously, you're doing the you know the the, the show the the lawn show, but then when you're in camp. You're having to get used to a whole new routine. Mm -hmm. You're pooping in a bucket. Mm -hmm. yeah. You're showering in a, a waterfall, you know, in your underwear or your swim trunks. You're having to, br you know, Fleur's brushing her teeth and I'm going to the bath. It's yeah. that it's close, crazy. right? Yeah. And you have to get, we had to get over a lot of yeah. stuff. Yeah, yeah. Immediately. So it, it, the first four days are the hardest, but once then you get past that, I'm not saying it's smooth sailing. Yeah. <laughs> it's hard. It's difficult. It's challenging. But it was some of the. It's one of the best things I've 
ever done. And I've said it before, I would go back in a second if they yeah. did. Uh, what was the know. hardest element of it for you, Flo? I think just being away from loved ones because I've traveled a lot, like doing music and stuff, but you can always text and you can always FaceTime and things like that. But then not having your unit around you, not being able to just pick up the phone and just be like, mom, I've had a really hard day or like just being able to vent to people. So a lot of the time, I remember when, when our camps merged at first, because I was at Snake Rock first, and then when I met the whole group, it was, it, was, it, was, it was really difficult to gel because everyone had their roles. So it's like I saw Sarah and Nick were like the cooks and then you were taking care of like the domestic side and everyone had their role. And I remember walking off the first morning and thinking, I don't fit into this. I don't know what I'm doing here. And it was like, who do I speak to? Because I couldn't really talk to anyone else because we were on camera and we were all going through the same thing. So it was really difficult to deal with that. And I had to like have a little word with myself. And then the minute I got over that and just surrendered to the jungle, so, yeah. then it was incredible. We had, the, we had so much fun. Yep. Tom, um, once the show starts, and once you get, it starts with a very dramatic um, arrival of everyone, those initial tasks, which are always incredible to watch. But once it settles down, is it ever hard to come up with your, your, your footage for a show every night? You, is that a challenge? Uh, well, no, I think because we go into the series having meticulously planned, we got, it, it, there's no other show that I've worked on where I know pretty much every minute of every day what we're going to be doing in terms of trials, challenges, format points. And that, in a sense, is our insurance policy because we need, we need to know that. We need to know that partly because those things are quite big builds. So uh, it's not something that we can just throw together at the last minute. But it also means that we know that we, will, we have sort of the building blocks of the show that have developed over the years. Um, and those give us the certainty that when we cut together the show, and it's, a, it's not a lot of time. We've only got 12 to 15 hours of content to then make the following morning's show, and that's a tight turnaround. There's no other show, no other reality show that does it in quite the same way. But obviously, if there were, we hope, and, and there almost always is lots of stories coming out of camp, and that means that you might change, and maybe you don't do a particular challenge that you've planned, or you change a particular format point. So you have that flexibility, but going in with that planning is really key. And Helen, what are the, what are the biggest challenges in terms of, like, for example, you know, I mean, the sheer number of small animals and insects yeah. and all of them and snakes and is, does that ever get easier to sort that out? No, it never no. ever ever gets easier, it always gets harder. I think I always look at it that we're sort of an ecological retreat based in Australia <laughs> but also making a live show within, as Tom said, overnight in sort of like 12 hours and then all the different departments that you're sort of managing. So you've got your carpenters who are building all your props and your challenges. You've got your critter team who literally, you know, will be like, we had one year that we didn't get enough uh, cockroaches because there was a shortage of cockroaches. And, you know, everyone was like, <laughs> oh, my God, like, as soon as, like, we'd finished filming with some cockroaches, there's this poor man, like, <laughs> scooping them all up for the, next, for the next year's show and then the next day's show. And then you've, you know, and then you've got your uh, animal team and the welfare and just it is so no day is ever the same. But you sort of, like fuel on that adrenaline and also you're just in the elements as well you know it's the weather it's you know we've had floods we've been cut off from getting the crew from their hotels in their minibus to site because of like a torrential downpour you've got lightning strikes that have blown up you know all our equipment and that that's happened about three times wow. and then one year the edit suites um the ups wasn't working and no one could work it out i had all the power people in my office going what the hell's going on post-production what is going on? No one could explain it. And there's a bloody great um, brown snake coiled up in the, uh, in the computer. And that's the thing. We are actually in the elements. Everyone thinks, oh, we must clear the jungle. We clear the jungle oh, no, from all these they snakes don't. and spiders. <laughs> we don't. They we, don't. And we have, you know, so we have specifically trained security guards or medics because you have to have a license. Yeah out in New South Wales in Australia to be able to move a snake. And you'll, you know, you just have a radio. Oh, you know, I've got a, a brown one found who we're sending in. <laughs> and they literally go with like a Hessian bag and kind of move the snake along. Yeah, so we, were, we were told if you ever saw anything, you just shout ranger <laughs> yeah. and you stay where you are. Yeah. 
That's like yeah. telling kids to not touch candy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we were all like, oh, look! <laughs> look at that python eating that rat. And over the, you know, there's, a, there's a loudspeaker that if there's an emergency, they can speak to you. Yeah. And they say, step back from the snake. Did yeah. we listen? No. Yeah. no. <laughs> Naughty. But you know, eventually yeah. we move back and somebody then yeah. comes in dressed in camo, yeah. Yeah. picks it yeah. up, takes it out, yeah. makes sure it's OK. Yeah, so we, have secu- you know, so we run a 24-7 security team who will have camouflage face is they will be there in camp just to make sure that you know everyone is kind of safe and well so it is it is a fine oiled machine but even so there will always be every series there will be some lovely wonderful inspiring surprise